Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris, where we are currently not very far into this. Let's go ahead and tick forward here on fast speed for the moment. And we'll just continue to do a little bit of surveying here. Now, I believe we're moving out, yeah, into Barnard Star here. But we need to know whether this star connects to anything out this way or not. I don't believe that it does. But we technically don't know that for a fact. So we're going to hold off on that for the moment. And we should probably start grabbing ourselves a third science ship at this point. So let's go ahead and hop into our shipyard and grab a, a pi third Pioneer class science ship. And with that, we are going to get ourselves another scientist, once we can. Our unity is a little on the low side, but that's fine. Survey complete. Okay, Barnard Star has been fully surveyed. And at this point, we're going to head down this direction. Hopefully from here, we'll be able to see whether there's a choke point here or not. We know for a fact there's one here. So we definitely want to target this star. And then we definitely want to target coming down here. The question is, does this continue? Or does that dead end? We'll find out. So we'll tick forward here for a bit. We did finish up the UES Galileo, and I would absolutely love to recruit another scientist. Actually, these ones are pretty cheap. Done. Cool. Now what are we gonna do with them? We are not going to survey with them. We are going to come out here and excavate this, although it's outside of our empire. So first things first, we need to build our star base here. So consider that done, and then we're going to move down here and start excavating this. Fantastic. Now we do have a mandate to build two city districts. That would max out our planet currently, and I don't think I'm going to do that at this time. So we'll hold off on that for the moment. Okay, now we can definitely see that the choke point is here. So that's what we need to beeline to. So we're going to survey here and here after we're done in Vohal. And after we're done in Procyon, we can see this extends out this direction. So we're certainly going to need to head down this way for the moment. Cool. So the Galileo is headed out here, and we're going to have that starbase done pretty soon. Once we're done there, we will move over into Procyon. Actually, no, we won't, because we need to build our mining station here. And now we can excavate the site in Barnard's Star. Which we will absolutely do. And then after we're done building anomaly this... Detected. Ooh, that's a very challenging anomaly. We're not going to do that one just yet. That's a level 4 anomaly. We'll wait till we have a little bit higher level scientists. That'll be fine. If it was an anomaly that took like under 100 days is usually my uh, cutoff for Construction that. Construction complete. Okay, we're going to head up to Procyon and... We've almost got this survey. Anomaly detected. 117. That one is pretty borderline. I'm going to leave it be for now. Like I said, my cutoff is usually 100 days. So that'll be fine. We'll have Procyon done soon. I'm definitely a little suspicious of our consumer survey goods level, complete. but for now it's okay. We're going to build a starbase out in Procyon, grab ourselves the two physics research there. Survey it looks complete. like these are going to be, well, that's a tomb world. This is a guaranteed habitable world, almost certainly. We can grab our tradition, and I think at this point, survey speed is what we want. So we're definitely going to take it to boldly go. Fantastic. And then this is a continental world here. So that's our other guaranteed world out in Alpha Centauri. Good to know. This is exactly 100 days, and we will research that one. Cool. So that means that Proxima, or rather Alpha Centauri, is going to take us a little while to survey. And it would anyway. But that's fine. As far as this excavation goes, it's going to take some time. That's for sure. Hey, we gained a level in the Von Braun, which is out over this way. For as long as we humans have been able to look to the stars for new homes, Proxima Centauri B has been a naive dream. A place we would look to with optimism. A new home. Sadly, as our telescopes got better, we realized that the planet would probably be tidally locked. A frozen hellscape. A theory which we have confirmed today. There is hope, however, that this world has all the building blocks necessary for a habitable planet. 
it might just need a slight push. So we can make that be a terraforming candidate and gain some unity. And once we research climate restoration, then we'll be able to terraform it, Proxima Centauri B. Alternatively, we can gain some unity. These are exactly the same. Another exoplanet added to our growing list, or we're going to go with thank you for inspiring us, Proxima Centauri B. There we go. Fantastic. Construction complete. Okay, so we just finished up in the Procyon system, and we will build a research station there. Fantastic. Okay. Well, we now see that our choke point is more out over here. Cool. A small cargo pod has been left to drift in space above this gas giant. It's been captured by the planet's gravity well and will eventually be pulled into its atmosphere. It's under 100 days, so let's do it. We have another tradition available here, and anomaly research speed would be good. We'll take that. Fantastic. So we want to get Alpha Centauri surveyed complete. here. Procyon is done, and we are definitely going to move out into Alpha Centauri next, I think. Actually, we could grab this alloy over here, and that's a pretty big deal. Interesting that it's taking this path, but I guess that's because this is two jumps. Sure. Should be safe. Okay. Once UES Scout got close enough to scan the cargo pod, it was assumed... It was assumed that the sensors were malfunctioning. The pod is built out of the exact same alloy we ourselves use for spacebound structures. The likelihood that some alien beings would come up with this exact mi mixture is beyond unlikely, yet after recalibrating the scanners, the same results happened. Upon opening the pod, the only thing greeting us was a collection of documents detailing exactly where we should assign each of our scientists and what they should study for 10 years forward. Well. Honestly, I think the influence is more valuable here than 5% research speed for 10 years. It's too unnerving. Cool. So with that influence, we are then going to be able to get more of these built. It seems life has found a way, even on a planet torn between the extremes of rocky soils and liquid seas. Okay, so we found an anomaly on Alpha Centauri B. Is that... Alpha Centauri 3 is the world that we are uh, interested in here. And yeah, there is life there. Okay, so that's a continental world. And we'll survey that and get Alpha Centauri done. After we're done in Vohal, we'll come back to Alpha Centauri. We're just kind of hopping between the two sides. That will become less viable going forward. Survey and we'll need complete. a second construction ship soon enough. Fascinating creatures roam the plains and coasts of Alpha Centauri 3. The UES scout reports that the lifeforms are using tools, however primitive, and may have the potential for eventually achieving sapience. Science officer Elsa Meyer stresses that finding alien life in this state is a rare opportunity, and we should pay special attention, maybe even uplift them to become our subjects. Something to keep in mind for the future. So, there are some pre-sapience here. We're probably going to colonize that world, though, is my guess. Okay. We are going to need to survey Sirius, and after we're done excavating this archaeological site, which could take a while, I'm going to survey that, and then this is a continental world as well. So we're going to survey Seoberg as well, and then we're going to come over to Procyon and excavate that site. Cool. We'll build mining stations here, and then we will head over to Alpha Centauri. Okay. All is looking good. The UES Galileo has, uh... Oh, okay. While excavating the ruins on Barnard Star 1, Fernanda Martin recently vanished without a trace. An extensive search by the other archaeologists turned up nothing. We have to assume the worst. Okay, so we have to restart that excavation. Interesting. Okay, so there's a maniacal here. But would Sakura be better off in one of these positions? Probably is the answer. I mean, this is in the computing tree. We have Spark of Genius, which is good. Spark of Genius here. I'm going to replace Wei Lin with Sakura Sakamoto. So that way we get the Maniacal in here. 
And then we are going to put Wei Lin here and excavate this site. And then survey, and then survey, and then excavate. Done. Survey complete. Okay. So this this site here, um, the, the remains of what is believed to be an, admi an ancient administrative complex belonging to a spacefaring species who called themselves the Gruner has been found on Barnard Star 1. This fallen civilization appears to have inhabited the planet a staggering 7 million years ago, and our archaeologists are eager to uncover their secrets. So yeah, our, our researcher disappeared without a trace, and we're going to bring in another one and hope that that doesn't continue to happen. We're going to come down this way. We're going to have a branch down here, so we'll see how that goes. And I think I am, at this point, going to output a second construction ship. We're going to struggle with our influence with two construction ships. That's for sure. But we'll see how that goes. So after we're done here, which we'll finish up soon, we're going to come to Cordip instead. And this construction ship will go to Alpha Centauri. There we go. I just don't want to be traveling back and forth as our Star League gets a little bit larger. Alpha Centauri has now finished up, and that of course means that we want to build a star base there. So we're going to come down here and survey next. Fantastic. Construction complete. Okay, this construction ship is now going to head over to Cordip. There we go. So, our influence is going to be a problem. Guaranteed. We know that for a fact. With two construction ships, it's going to be tough. Ah. Ta aliens. Well, we'll start our first contact procedure here. That looks like a science ship to me. Okay, so that's probably some people who need to be liberated. We'll send Hubert Javin here to investigate that. And we'll see. Cool. So we finished chapter one here, the bowel organism. Decoded ancient data crystals have been found at the dig site, chronicling the Gruner's military exploits. While most are local and of little interest, several volumes detail the Gruner's first encounter with an alien species referred to as the bowel organism. Little more can be gleaned about the bowel at this point, save they were a massive plantoid species and have many colonies seated among the stars. Enticing. Keep digging. Okay. So we'll continue digging on that one. And we are very soon here going to get ourselves our first colony on Alpha Centauri 3. So that should be absolutely great. Anomaly detected. Okay. An abandoned ship has been left to drip, drift aimlessly. Wow, words are very difficult all of a sudden. Above this planet. Complete. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggest that it relied on solar power to function. Okay, so this is a solar sailor. That'll get us some decent uh, engineering research. Sounds good. We're going to build our mining and research stations in Cordic. complete. And we're going to build our mining stations in Alpha Centauri. Beautiful. From here, of course, we want to immediately colonize Alpha Centauri 3 which we will do. Excellent. So with that underway, we will continue to push down over this way eventually. We see two continental worlds down here. So we've got ourselves some decent habitable worlds. This tomb world is not going to be habitable. I can tell you that right now. We would love to grab Ebonar. An interesting, albeit primitive design indeed. Complete. We have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Ebonar 7. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting design choices. Indeed. So there we go. This construction ship is done in Alpha Centauri now. And Akmal is absolutely a good place for us to grab, so we'll head on over there. Hey, our first contact event is pending. Following the sighting of ident unidentified spacecraft in the Ebonar system, all forces in the vicinity have been ordered to assume a heightened sense of readiness, as per standard protocol. Intelligence is still analyzing what little data we have on the bogey, but it appears capable of hyperspace travel. 
Offensive capabilities remain unknown. As this likely represents our first contact with a new alien civilization, we should take steps to decipher their communications. Keep at it. Okay. So we're going to be done here in Cordip pretty soon. Once we are done there, we'll build the starbase in P94L. We can grab a tradition and research station output would be pretty good here. We can also grab research subsidies. Now, what do we have here? Okay. We can't really afford to grab research subsidies at this time. Our edict fund is 20, which means that we'd be paying 26 per month on our research subsidies, which means that we'd be minus one on our unity. That is not acceptable. We are lacking a job on Earth, and we could go for a monument here. Now, that wouldn't get us a job, but that would get us a decent amount of unity. Produces one for each ascension perk our empire has taken. That's actually not as good as it used to be. At least early on. It's, it's better later, but it's not as good early. So maybe instead, we do need a job here. I think we'll get an industrial district. There we go. 5% growth of unity on 25 income is not a lot. So for the time being, that'll be fine. Now, I would like to figure out which direction we want to go here. We'll try surveying out here. And the UES India is in Akmal right now. There's not a lot it can do there. Our linguists are becoming increasingly frustrated at our failure to provide them with sufficient material to make progress on decoding the language used by the Ta aliens. It seems these particular aliens are doing their utmost to prevent their signals from being heard by the wrong ears. Well, keep trying. We'll see. They're not in the Asgard system. Good to know. Technology discovered. Engineering research from researchers, plus 20%. And we also finished up administrative AI, so that's great. We're going to take, at this point, oh, I was hoping to see physics research from researchers. Sad. Very sad indeed. I guess we'll take field modulations then. And geothermal fracking. That's some unfortunate tech generation there, but it's not the end of the world. So our colony ship is going to be done fairly soon. It's at 85%, and that's great. We can see that the Taw aliens are currently here. And we're building our research station here now. Survey complete. Cool. We finished up our survey of Akmal. Now we need to decide whether we go this way or this way. For now, we're going to head down this direction. Eventually, we're going to want to go up this way for sure. But until we have more information, that'll be fine. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Earth. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of potential voters found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, voter-bearing worlds. Fantastic. We'll do that, or we could gain just a lump sum of unity. Honestly, I think we'll take the lump sum of unity. Cool. That means that we are going to get ourselves our next uh, discovery point much sooner. Polytechnic education would be great. In fact, we'll have that quite complete. soon. We'll build our mining and research stations in Akmal. Technology discovered. Okay. And there's our next tradition. Beautiful. So we grab polytechnic education. And we're now 34 months away from faith in science, but that would also get us our uh, finisher effect, which is plus 10% research speed, plus our ascension perk, which is going to have to be technological ascendancy for an additional 10% research speed. Beautiful. So we grant a lump sum of unity and we get 5% extra unity. That's fine. Edicts fund plus 20 would be pretty good here. We'll take that. That's a long ways out, but for the time being, that's okay. Cool. So that industrial district on Earth will finish soon. Let's look at Alpha Centauri here in terms of districts. 
Okay, it wouldn't be a terrible alloy or consumer good generation planet. Like an industrial world, is what I'm thinking. Anomaly detected. The geoscape of... Oh, hello. We'll get back to that in a moment. Oh, the Von Braun was destroyed. Okay, sure. We'll get back to that in a moment. The geoscape of Euchromia 3A is dominated by what appear from orbit to be silvery metallic crystals of dimensions never before seen. From orbit, they eerily resemble skyscrapers. Closer study is warranted. We'll look into it. Okay. We know for a fact we need a new science ship. So we'll grab that. Our explorers knew first contact be a, to be a dangerous affair, but none could have predicted just how true this would be. In a violent assault, the Ta alien seized our vessel, landing a boarding party before emergency FTL could be engaged. Despite our crew's valiant efforts, the attackers, a molluscoid alien species, were able to overwhelm our defenses. Our visual feeds from within the ship have now cut off, but not before showing us the unspeakable atrocities the aliens are committing against the hostages, cutting them open and studying their insides even while they're still alive. We must assume that such hostilities are inevitable when faced with a civilization that would act in such a manner. We must prepare for war. Okay, so we're now hostile to the Taw aliens. And they uh, vivisected us. That's unfortunate. <laughs> But sure. But hey, there's our archaeological site done. Data crystal records reveal that the Gruner waged war against the Bowel, desiring the plentiful resources reportedly found on their planets. A set of system coordinates have been successfully extracted from one such record. Our archaeologists are uploading the planet's location to our systems now. Perhaps a closer investigation of Alpha Centauri 4 will prove fruitful. Okay. Long updated. So now there's something that we can investigate in Alpha Centauri. Got it. Okay. For now, all we're going to do is we're going to survey here, survey here, and then we'll go over to Alpha Centauri, and then excavate in Procyon. Cool. Now we're going to want to start bumping up our fleet, almost certainly, now that we know that these guys are vivisectioners. So that's going to be something we're going to need to do. Let's go ahead and hop into our fleet manager and bump this up to a command limit of 20. And let's take a look at what our actual setup is for our Corvette. I mean, we don't have much tech right now. I don't like to run shields on Corvettes, so we're going to run nano composite armor. And I guess we could run a reactor booster. And that's like all we've got. And we're not going to auto-generate designs or auto-upgrade. Coyote class Corvettes are going to be fine. Eventually, we'll want to shift, shift this over into, like, a, a, a picket interceptor type design. But for now, this will do. And we'll get these, quote-unquote, upgraded. That will take 48 alloys. And our alloys are a little bit slim at the moment. But with an industrial district finishing up here, that should help. Ships upgraded. Okay. So we now have an available job here. And that'll be fine. Colony. Our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta, on one of the several continents that can be found on Alpha Centauri Prime. This temperate forested region will serve as an ideal first landing site. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed, so it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first human city on an alien world. A great day for the Human Star League. Indeed. So this construction ship can definitely build a research station out over here, and this science ship, I'm going to have it come over here and research... Actually, we don't have a leader here. Uh, what do we have available? Yikes. These aren't very good. We're going to come over here and research these, I think. Actually, no. We're going to go back over this way. Now, we can't go into the Asgard system, apparently. That one is claimed by the Tau aliens. Okay. So now we know that we need to come down this direction. Cool. Wonder if this dead ends over here. Detailed analysis of the enormous metallic crystals dominating Euchromia 3A's landscape have defied all expectations. Science officer Elsa Meyer is excited to reveal that these oversized crystals are in fact composed of trillions upon trillions of deactivated nanites. 
There's no evidence of Euchromia 3A having had an atmosphere thick enough to support life as we know it at any point in the past. The nanites may have been deposited on the planet by some unknown spacefarers for an unknown purpose. As far as Elsa Meyer can tell, the nanites compiled themselves into perfectly oriented crystalline lattices and replicated until a point at which they became deactivated. While the crystals they created do in fact resemble buildings, they are entirely uniform in composition and cannot possibly have served any such purpose. Incredible. So we got some nanites and we got some research and with that it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and next episode we're going to see what we can do about those Taw aliens. That's going to be potentially very dangerous. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Kadra, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time. That's definitely the wrong button. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna go back to here and then do this.